It's Sunday morning, 9 a.m., and we're sitting in a bar. The dojo bar, actually. Once again, Josh Simmons coming to you from the birthplace of Friday, Okinawa, Japan. And today, I happen to be sitting in the dojo bar with Mr. James Pankovich. Good morning, sir. Thank you. Thank you. This is coffee, by the way. Good coffee. It's not coffee. Before, right? <laughs> <laughs> Tempting as that is. But no. <laughs> we didn't spend the whole night here, actually. It was an <laughs> early, early night for me. We did the cherry blossoms yesterday at Nakajin Castle. Very nice. I think I was in bed by 9 o'clock. So. <laughs> but we happen to be here this morning because, well... Who else should I have on the podcast except the man that has allowed me to do an interview here in his bar, two interviews at his dojo directly across the street. Actually, James, you were on the first interview that I did here. I was. Uh, so with Yoshi the Sensei. He's kind of piping into the side yeah, a little that's bit. That's right. Uh, so now it's long overdue to have you on here. I really appreciate Thank you it. Thank you very much. Thank it's you. A, always a pleasure. To Mine too. All of our conversations, whatever level of sobriety we're at there. <laughs> Are, uh, are excellent. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know. <laughs> we do train together a lot. I have to yeah. say that it's not all, you know, actually it's mostly training. I think we've a little bit of training. Yeah, there's been much more training than training. Yeah. So the training opportunities are always fantastic yeah, too. They are. They yeah. are. So, and, you know, I've said before, I want to say it again. Thank you very much for your support and allowing me to do the, the interviews. Uh, I interviewed Olf Carl Carlson and interviewed Jesse Ann Camp at your, your dojo um, after the seminars that they yeah. conducted. And thank you very much for that, that support and allowing me to do so. I mean, it's, you know, I'm very, very pleased that we get people like that coming to Okinawa, coming to the dojo, offering to share what they know and share their passion. Um, it's, you know, that's what's special about this place is that it's still a real mecca, a crossroads for lots of people coming together. It absolutely is. Uh, perfectly defined as well, the crossroads and the mecca because of the bar right here. And then, what, 30 meters across the road, um, yeah. your dojo probably could have been planned any better. I mean, it, it's worked out pretty well. Um, it, there, was, there was obviously a few years kind of difference between opening one and opening the other. Um, but uh, I sort of have a feeling that we need to turn this street into sort of karate street, yes, you know. I think so. Karate Dory in yeah. Okinawa. Yeah. I mean, sure. <laughs> Sure, it was only like a block deck. <laughs> so there's just a block we have to fill with as many yeah. karate related yeah. things as we can, and you know, nobody will ever leave. Well, I think you're on the right path for that, though. <laughs> We're going to leave it up to you. You're doing, you're doing a, a great job, so the, the international community is going to leave it up to you to keep doing that. International street trade next door, but I like that, Karate Dory. Yeah, yeah, no, it's. Uh, I, you know, they, they sort of, you know, great, great minds kind of, you know, come together and. What they say, birds of a feather flock together, yes, that sort do. of thing, you know. Yes, they do. And then, you know, that's great, and that's when you, that's when you, 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 you meet different people, you learn different things, uh, you know. It's great to train by yourself and do your own research and do all that, you need to do that. But, you know, when you meet other people, yeah. often that's the spark for exactly. really learning something yep. new, yep. Um, putting what you do in context, yep. which helps often to give you motivation as well. Yep. I think there are some people who are just like leave me alone, I just want to train. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. That's, That's okay. fine. Everybody has to be you know, know, their own person. You, you, need, you need that. Some people need that mostly. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, yeah, the, the interaction, I have to say, the opportunities to interact with people since I've been here, either in the dojo with training uh, or you know, let's say in the, in, the, in the after training, more mm -hmm. social context. Mm -hmm. Is uh, where you learn, where I've learned so much. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I think we need to promote that and do more. I 100% agree. We had a similar conversation after um, the last session. Was it the last session of, of Ulf Carlson's seminar, or yeah. it might have been New Year's Eve over here at your dojo when we were talking about that? Promoting good things. Yeah. There's enough. Garbage out there. Yeah. Whether you're talking about karate or anything yeah. else, right? But promote the good things, yeah. and that's what is is happening here yeah. um, on, a, on an increasing scale. Yeah. And I'm glad that you're part of it. I'm glad that I can be part of it. Cool. And I think we should just keep keep pushing in that direction. So I want to go back in time just a little bit. Sure. You've been on the island now. You've called the island home for ten years. Yeah, coming up to ten years. 
let's go back to uh, minus one year, if you don't mind. Mm. Uh, or just, you know, as far back as you want to go, bring us up to speed. A lot of people are familiar with your bar. A lot of people are familiar with your dojo. They mm. know what you're doing. But there's people that maybe aren't familiar or the ones that have met you. They don't know more of your history. Sure. So let's get okay. around that if you don't mind. Yeah, so good. Um, so I'm from the UK. I'm from a place called Somerset in the southwest of the UK. It's kind of a mm, sort of green, uh, sort of agricultural area of the country. A lot of people go down there for vacations. Uh, pleasant place. You appreciate it a lot more once you've left and yeah. gone back. You know? yeah. and like any yeah. any kid growing up in a small town. Yes, right? yes, yes, yes. Um, like any, I really was uh, always interested in in the wider world, um, and I think. You know, I, I, I love sports at school. I've always loved uh, physical, physical activities. Uh, and I sort of discovered, you know, karate and kung fu, you know, through movies and things mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. as everybody, everybody does. Else, yeah. um, but I was particularly interested in, in uh, Japanese culture, you know, the Kushido culture, and, and the, the sort of the, the history of, of Japanese because culture. Because of the movies? Or because of movies else? and because of. I guess reading a little bit about it and, and thinking this is an entirely different culture okay. you know, from mine. Yeah. Uh, the language is entirely different. Sure. And so, you know, something that seemed very exotic. Yeah. Um, so I think that was what caught my interest. I had traveled a little bit when I was, when I was young, uh, between 18 and 21. I, I spent quite a lot of time down in Greece. And again, that was just because I wanted to travel and I wanted to experience something quite different and again, quite exotic. Mm -hmm. um, and during that time, I was a little bit of martial arts practice, actually, in Greece. But during that time, I mainly got fired up to come back and study Japanese. But before you even left home to go to Greece, you had trained in some style of martial arts. Yeah, I was very lucky in that um, there were only one or two karate dojos in my hometown, but one of them uh, run by a teacher called Arthur Meek, who still teaches. He's a fantastic teacher, teaching wado ryu karate uh, and kickboxing. Uh, and uh, Mix Sensei was a very strong, very kind of uh, uh, solid teacher. Mm -hmm. And he'd also been to Japan and trained in Japan, had the experience too. And so he would uh, you know, train us in the way that, that he thought was right, mm -hmm. traditional way, mm -hmm. strong way. Um, and he also he would tell us about his experiences training in Japan as well. Mm -hmm. And I think that that also was a key thing in kind of making me really get a hunger to kind of experience that mm -hmm. myself. Mm -hmm. So I decided that I needed to get to Japan to study, uh, continue Wadori Karate at that time. I was also doing some Jiu-Jitsu practice. Okay. Um, and um, so I didn't really have the money to do it by myself. I didn't really know anybody in Japan. So I decided to go and study Japanese university. So that combined studying martial arts with studying university, which I wanted to do too. So. I went to London University Japanese department, and um, that got me to Japan twice on exchange, which was okay. fantastic. Okay. So I spent six months in Hokkaido okay. in my first year. And then in my third year, I spent a year in Osaka, which I then extended another year. When you went to Hokkaido, did you get to train in Wado Ryu? Or, yeah. Or, okay. Yeah, I, uh, when I got there, I went and found uh, Wado Ryu Dojo as soon as I could and started training. Is Wado Ryu? Rather prevalent in, in the main It's fairly in Japan. Fairly popular. Okay. Yeah. I would say Shotokan is the most common. Kyokushin yeah. is also very common. Yeah. But Wadaru also generally most areas of Japan I think there are Wadaru dojos. Okay. Um, so it wasn't I, I was lucky again, there was a dojo in the I was staying in uh, Sapporo, which is the capital of uh, or the state capital of Hokkaido. Mm -hmm. uh, but we were right on the edge of the city. Because the university I was going to was kind of out in the sticks a little bit, um, so we were staying in the, uh, in the homestay program. And people was, with the local people. I was staying in an, in an apartment with a single mom and her two kids. <laughs> <laughs> so I was, uh, and they were they were wonderful people, wonderful people. How old were the kids? The kids were sort of young teenagers, okay. right? And you know what Japanese apartments are like, yes, right? We were in an apartment That's block. That's the size of yeah. where we're sitting. Yeah, yeah. we were in an apartment <laughs> block. Um, I arrived. I had, I was, you know, I was already fully grown. I was yeah. in my early twenties at this point. Yeah. Right? Um, I had this huge backpack on, 
six months worth of yeah. gear in it, yeah. right? And uh, <laughs> so we went there as a group. We got bus to the university, and then we did the meeting. We met all the homestay families, and I can remember the look on the faces of my homestay family when I they went, "This is James. He's with you." And I just like stood up, and they went, "Oh my god!" Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, I remember we got to the apartment, and uh, I had I still had my backpack on, and I went into the, into their hallway. Yep. And I was knocking pictures off the yep. wall because yep. it was so <laughs> yeah, small. Yeah, yeah. Right? So I was like edging my way into yep. the apartment. Um, but they were wonderful. They were lovely people. For someone that's never traveled to Japan or Okinawa, that right in itself is like a life lesson. Oh, yeah. Pack small. Oh yeah. You know, I mean, <laughs> uh, sometimes I have to travel up to up to Tokyo for work, and the hotels there's a, a, a few that we're allowed to choose from, or they recommend, and they are just. Tiny, tiny. I mean, I'm taking pictures of them, taking videos, and send them back to my yeah. wife. Our house here isn't big by any means. Yeah, but it's, it's it's much larger than some of the apartments. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's it's comical. There's there's plenty of uh, YouTube videos where people make you know make fun of it or make oh, light yeah. of it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah, they were they were wonderful. I spent six months with them um, and studying at university. Unfortunately, there was a wider view dojo just down the street. So that was great. Um, I came back to the UK for my second year of university. I studied at the university clubs. It was Shotokan, actually mostly some wider youth uh, and uh, Jiu Jitsu. Mm -hmm. um, that year zoomed by, and then I was back to Japan. And this time I went to Kansai University in Osaka yeah. uh, for a one year program. Uh, and I liked, and, I, and again, I, I went and found. A Wado, it was actually Wado Kai, it's just another association of Wado. So uh, I trained in this Wado Kai dojo for what well, ended, ended up being two years because um, I took a year out to stay there for another year. I was training with my sensei, he said, you know, if you keep going, then you'll be able to take your shodan here uh, in Kansai. So, of course, that was exactly what I wanted to do. And I was doing lots of competitions, um, I was training every day. Competitions, kata, kumite? Um, mainly kumite, actually. Okay. Um, I was obviously training kata and kumite. Uh, my kata was oh, uh, <laughs> like it is now, to be honest. But um, kumite, I was enjoying. It was it was um, you know uh, point scoring kumite. Okay. Yeah. So I did that. Bogu gear points. Uh, it, it, it varied. Okay. It varied. In the university, actually, I was at Kansai University. In the university, they had a uh, Nihon Kenpo. Club, yeah. So, and they had a boxing club as well. So, uh, with the Nihon Kenpo, we would we would yep. put the mask on the traditional kind yep. of kendo, yep. uh, uh, body shield, yep. etc. So that was good, good training. So I was doing a whole range of things, uh, uh, jiu jitsu as well. Um, so you know, I was just trying to make the most of my time. Yeah. Obviously. James, what are you is most closely related to what style would you say here in Okinawa? Or is it not related? Is it a hybrid? Um, well, it came from uh, essentially Funakoshi Sensei, uh, Otsuka Sensei, who founded Wado Ryu, was a Japanese Jiu Jitsu instructor. Um, so he then learned Okinawan Karate from Funakoshi um, and combined that into Wado Ryu. I like Wado Yu because it was a little more uh, angular mm -hmm. um, than you use. Uh, so it, it combines those elements of Jiu Jitsu in terms of entering and hitting. Mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. um, and there was a little uh, bit of uh, weapons work in there as well. So there was some, some Tanto Dori, some knife okay. defense work in there as well. Very traditional. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, it had that additional kind of area of interest. Did they adapt the kata then also from, that would be similar to Shotokan? The kata is pretty similar to Shotokan. Okay. Yeah. Do you have the Naihanshi or they call it Teki or? Uh, they called it Naihanshi. Naihanshi Shodan, they had Pina Kata, they okay. called Pina. Uh, most of the same kata, uh, Kushanku Kata, Chinto, uh, Goju Shiho, I believe. Uh, okay. Uh, Seisan Kata. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it's it's in the definitely in the shore in yep. 
view family, yep. so to speak. Okay. Uh, so when I later on came to Okinawa and started training Matsubashiru, it wasn't a completely new thing. It was yeah. more of a transition. Yeah. I see. When you came here, though, um, well, tell us how you came here because you did not come here when you were studying in university. You didn't come here until after you had met. That's right. Yeah. Film. I yeah. while I was at Kansai University, I met my uh, future wife, yep. uh, who was from from here, from Okinawa, and uh, she was also kind of a bit like a foreign student in Kansai University because. Um, you know, as we both know, the Okinawan culture is quite distinct. Yeah. And while it's part of the Japanese nation, so to speak, um, the Okinawans have a fairly distinct identity. Uh, and so Okinawans on mainland Japan also are not 100% Japanese, yeah. right? They kind of stand out a little bit. Yeah. So I think there was maybe that kind of slightly kindred spirit between yeah. us. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And yeah, and when we met, I thought, oh, she's pretty cute, and then it kind of went from there, right? So, <laughs> um, she was studying English, um, so we just spent a lot of time together. Um, she tried a little bit of martial arts practice, I think mainly to, you know, <laughs> to appease you, <laughs> kind of keep me happy. <laughs> but um, so she, she did, really still does here, right? Now and again, yeah. yeah. She's yeah. still yeah. trained now and again. I mean, she doesn't have like a crazy passion for it like I do. Yeah. Uh, but, um, She'll enjoy. She enjoys. I can't again. get my wife to. Not at all. <laughs> not at all. She asked me once to teach her how to show down. I said, "Okay, come to the dojo." Okay. You know. But. <laughs> yeah. So you know, there are a lot of people that look at martial arts training and just scratch their heads, like, "Why would yeah. you do that? Why do you need to do that?" You know? Yeah, there are people, but boy, oh my gosh, when you get into it, it's like, why would you not? You know, hard to explain. I, I don't know. Yeah, hard yeah. to explain, but. Um, my, my parents, um, while I was at home, one of the reasons I didn't train in martial arts is my parents were very much opposed to it. So they would just see that as sort of, you know, why would you want to practice that kind of violent mm -hmm. sport? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I can understand, you know, an outside perspective. Mm -hmm. And I think actually we need to remember what other people's perspectives are on it. You know? Isn't that the truth? I have a student right now, an American, that uh, we're kind of the same thing. His his parents looked at it as fighting, as only as violence, mm -hmm. and would not let him training anything yeah. as, as well. And he's training with me now. He's a great young man. Uh, unfortunately, he's only going to be here until June. Yeah. Air Force, he's going to leave. You know, but he's going to mainland Japan, so hopefully, he can find something up there. But the same yeah. thing. It's it's that perception. Um, I guess there are places in America, dojos, perhaps. In, different places in the West world. It may be even in Japan, but that is their outlook. It's let's be violent or whatever. But yeah. that's not Okinawa. In my feeling that's not Okinawa at all. It's not Okinawa right. Yeah. Um, you know, there's this such a huge range in uh, the approach to martial arts practice. Uh, uh, and you know, and, and a million different personalities involved. Yeah. Um, I think we tend to gravitate towards those who like to practice in a fairly humble way, yep. um, not use it as a way to try and prove that you're better than anybody yep. else or put anybody else in their place. Yep. Um, you know, we don't feel the need to be champion. Yep. Um, so, you know, it's for me, uh, martial arts practice is, is non competitive. Yep. However, I never want to become complacent. Yes, yes. Um, so there's this drive to keep progressing, yeah. uh, to improve yourself, but you don't need to, uh, to be better than somebody else to prove that to yourself. Right, well, that's, you know, whatever the simple saying is, be better than you were the day before. Yeah. The, only the competition should be with yourself. Yeah. One of the things that was very humbling to me and eye opening, as a matter of fact, is when we went to Taiwan. Two years ago, or something like that now, yeah. versus 2019, maybe two years ago. And when you walk around over there and you see people, I, I think sitting here today, I probably weigh 81 kilos, 82 kilos. Mm. You're a little bit more. Yeah. But 
you go over there to a place like Taiwan, even here in Okinawa, right? But in Okinawa, I guess I was familiar with this feeling, like this yeah. this belief. But in 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 Taiwan, when we train, people just literally come from work. They don't change their clothes, or they just mm -hmm. throw on some sweatpants. You have no, there's no obi. Yeah. You have no idea who this person is, what their skill level is, and then all of a sudden, you realize this person is lethal. Yeah. And they weigh maybe, you know. 70 kilos and it's very eye-opening i think do yeah. not underestimate what's what these people can do to you so, and we've talked about that even sitting right here in this mm -hmm. in this bar right bar people get drunk they get loud they get their beer muscles uh i've not experienced that since i've been here i'm not so saying you have it but doesn't really happen yeah it's just this kind of this calmness so everyone knows what they're here for they're training they're having a good time yeah. it's not uh, you know, going to watch a UFC match at Buffalo Wild Wings in America, and now you have to prove something. Okay. It's it's it's, re it's a relaxing feeling to be here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right there. It's interesting that you mentioned uh, UFC. Um, so this isn't a uh, sports bar or a fight bar or whatever. Um, sometimes people ask me, you know, oh, are you going to put the UFC? Yeah. On? yeah. And they're kind of surprised that we don't kind of have it playing nonstop. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but. And uh, I think UFC and that, and that kind of competition has its place. Um, there, are, there are times when I want to, uh, you know, go into competition, do that sort of thing. You want to test yourself, you know, uh, you want to test your martial arts, etc. Um, and it's entertaining to watch, right? So you, either from you just like the fact that two guys are going at each other, or if you have some technical understanding, you're like, oh, that was a fantastic technique. Oh, look, he's got great strategy. Right? That's more when I watch it, I'm like, oh. That guy is really using good technique, yeah. right? um, but it's not—it's not right for the atmosphere here. Yeah. Um, it's you know, uh, unfortunately, with with those kind of competitive fighting arts, yeah. Um, what can I say? You know, it's about one person winning and beating another person down, yeah. And while there's maybe a time and a place for that, you know, the dojo bar is not a, it's not a place where we need to sort of prove the, the prove ourselves, yeah. right? I, I, people come here because they want to relax, yeah. not because they want to come into some sort of competitive atmosphere. Right. Right. Um, and I think the reason people keep coming back is because they feel comfortable and relaxed here. Yeah, and actually, uh, I've been in here several times where many people don't train. Yeah. It's an international bar. Yeah. It really is people from here and speak English, yeah. or you know, just want to communicate with people from five different countries on any given day, or yeah. something like that. So, uh, wrap that up about the UFC. Though there was a friend of mine back in the states who practiced in Taekwondo, and he he got to the point where he said he could not. He he would go to like a place like Buffalo Wild Wings yeah. and watch it because then you don't have to pay for it at your home or whatever. Right. But he said he, he got to the point where you could feel it. everybody was eyeballing. Yeah. Instead of watching the fight, they're watching you. Yeah, like, yeah. Okay, I think I can take that guy. Yeah, it's yeah. like it's just this uncomfortable, like a pack of wolves or whatever. Like, eat your chicken wings, drink your beer, and just watch the fight. You know, it's anyway. That's the well, the wild wings bright for me. And you, well, no, I, you know, I uh, I worked my way through college and university as a bouncer. Yeah. So that was my that was my yeah, job. Yeah, that was yeah. my income wherever. I, I was. I worked as a doorman in my home country, in my hometown, in the UK. I worked in London, in the West End, and different places. I worked in Japan when I was there. I worked in Greece, um, and um, you know, so I've seen a lot of that, yeah. of those kind of environments. In a way, it kind of puts you off of being able to relax in those kinds of environments. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not really a clubbing person. Yeah. Uh, I, you know. I like a more relaxed kind of place. Okay, so bring us up to the dojo bar then. This is a good segue into that. You've been open here now eight years? Eight years now, yeah. And we're we're obviously not sitting in an environment that's like a Buffalo Wild Wings. Tell us why you chose this type of environment. Give us a little background on that. Well, I, uh, so uh, I married my wife in, uh, in 2000 and that, around, around that time is when we, we started coming to Okinawa regularly. So we'd come here, we were living in London, we both, both graduated university, we were living in London. But we'd come here almost every year to see her family. Um, 
And so for about 10 years, uh, I was regularly coming to Okinawa. Unlike, you know, many visitors that come here that have an interest in karate, I would look around and try and find dojos or some, you know, local karate activity. And it was very hard to find. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a shure down the street, which is yeah. a famous karate store. So you'd find that. But apart from that, it was very difficult to find dojos without somebody local to kind of guide you around and give you an introduction. Um, Miguel de Luz, who is kind of, has been in Okinawa for you know, well over 20 years yeah. now, um, was one local resource that if you could find Miguel or you could find his karate news yeah. uh, newsletter, yeah. then that was a way that you could kind of get connected. But, so he's been doing, you know, that, and great work for years yeah, and years. Yeah, he does great work. And uh, so, you know, our senpai. Yes, right? yes, he is. Uh, so I have a lot of gratitude and respect for him. Um, but even so, it was pretty difficult. And so I felt, okay, well, and what I did hear about, though, was that, oh, there's this uh, a restaurant run by uh, uh, Karate Sensei, Okinawa Karate Sensei. If you go there, a lot of karate people hang out there. I said, oh, great, okay. So I tried to find it, but oh, it's shut, it's finished. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's another place, maybe. Trying to find it now, that one's shot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, this was in the sort of the first year that I'd actually moved here with with my wife and family. Um, and um, I was helping out my wife's business. Uh, my wife's family business had been making uh, sweets, traditional confectionery mm -hmm. for, for many generations. Um, but, you know, I wanted my own, my own business. Mm -hmm. uh, so then the, the, those things came together. Really. Um, having spent years working in pubs and yep. clubs, bars, I thought of, you know, fairly confident I knew how to run the business. Um, and uh, I thought, yeah, I'll go for it. A karate themed place, make it really easy for people to find. Yep. E e either physically, you know, put it on the same street as Shuedo, on the line, you know, yep. call it the dojo bar. You know, if they're searching for karate and dojo, they're going to find it. Hopefully. The outside wall for the I'll, I'll take a picture and yeah. put it in my post on. But uh, yeah, I'm sure many people seen it. You can't miss it. <laughs> <laughs> but the idea was that it would be a, an information point. <clears throat> so, you know, yes, people would stop and have a beer and pizza, but um, they would come because this is a place where they'd find information, they'd find other people. And so that's always been the, uh, the idea uh, and the identity of the Dojo Park, yeah. is that um, this is a place where you can connect with local information. Uh, I think you know that's again why it's why it's become good. Yeah. So did you uh, start eyeballing this area that we're in now because it's close to Kota Saidori, because it's convenient to obviously Shreyo, but I mean, how did you land this? Well, yeah, I was kind of looking in this in this general area where uh, this area is called Asato, as you know, and uh, Asato has kind of quite a, a a long history associated with, uh, let's say, martial arts or martial arts figures in mm -hmm. Okinawa. Shuredo is just down the street. Um, the main drag, Kokusai Dori, is kind of you know, a couple hundred meters that mm -hmm. way, right? So, yeah, I kind of have a feeling that this area would be a good place to put something. Um, and I, you know, I was looking around for several months, and then came across uh, this unit, which was, which was available. Um, I think it required a little bit of work inside, as it usually does, but uh, yeah. I think people have done a pretty good job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the sort of DIY decorating <laughs> has uh, has really taken off. In if you've not been <laughs> to the dojo bar, you better get here and find an empty, oh, the ceiling's open. Yeah. Okay. If you're tall or acrobatic, okay. then yeah, there's still space for you. Yeah. There's not, <laughs> not a lot of places <laughs> on the wall. <laughs> yeah. And maybe some white marker down yeah, yeah. the floor. But. Well, but it's, you know, this sort of happened naturally, right? We didn't encourage anybody to run. The yeah. They just started asking to do it. Uh, but it's great, right? Because it shows the community yes. that's attached to the dojo. Right? Yeah. So those that have not been here, or those that are only listening to this in audio, uh, on the wall is thousands of signatures, names, uh, dojo names, dates. People come in here, they draw pictures, they draw their, their crest or their emblem. Um, some rather large and quite detailed, great artwork. <laughs> Others, like mine, are garbage. But at one time, you had a Makuhara over here on the wall. I did. And you had to punch that before you could. <laughs> yeah, 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 that was told. That was true. Yeah. That was true, yeah. For a while, they had the rule that 
Uh, so the thinking behind this was that we didn't want to just have like any kind of random tourist come in and sign that sign because you know then they might just write anything. Yes. Before, right? We were being a little bit yeah, yeah. snobby about this. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You have to be a karateka to sign the wall. So you have to hit the makiwara yeah. to, to, to sign the wall. So there was this kind of yeah this kind of test. Um, the makiwara is not there anymore because I opened my own dojo, and it's over there. There you go. You can walk. 50 steps across the street, punch the microwave, and then come back and sign the wall. <laughs> Please don't sign the wall in the dojo. <laughs> the dojo, yeah, there's no signing in the dojo. <laughs> yeah. They're sweating, but no signing. <laughs> so, so uh, a quick story here. 2013, we were, we were visiting. We did not live here at the time. And right. we were staying, my, my wife and daughters and I were renting an apartment right down here at the end uh, of the dojo. Yeah, yeah. And we had been here for two or three weeks. I think it was a three week stay. It was towards the end. I kept yeah. driving by here. Yeah, I want to go in there. I want to go in there. And this, was, I wasn't on Facebook at the time, yeah. but I found your website, the Dojo Bar. Yeah. I said, I want to go in this place. And we had just a few days left. It was a Sunday. I remember it was kind of drizzling. And we were coming back to the apartment from over towards the water area. And I told my wife, drop me off. And I came in. And I walked up to the door, which was two foot on the door, which is a great, yeah. a great door handle. And it was maybe seven or eight o'clock at night. And I could see through the semi-transparent glass that there was a body in here, but I couldn't quite tell if the place was open or not. Yeah. So I, I kind of opened the door slowly, and Sam Chambers was over here. I, and I thought she was cleaning up. It looked yeah. like she was moving a, a yeah. chair. And I was like, wow, are you, are you closing? Yeah. She said, no, I was just doing push-ups. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm in the right place. This is fantastic, you know. And actually, yeah, she was the one who told me you had to punch my board and yeah. sign the wall. Yeah. Well, you know, she was the first person to sign the wall. Ah. It all started this time. Thank you, Sam. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so she worked here uh, for a couple of years, I think. Um, and uh, yeah, she was she was one of the most popular uh, yeah. staff members here. And, and uh, she helped me a lot. Um, so again, always grateful to Sam. Uh, and I still see her around from time yeah. to time. She doesn't live in Naha anymore. She's a little further north now, but I saw her just the other day. It's always nice to see her. But yeah, she was here one night. I think it was a bit quiet, a bit slow. I guess she was just laying on the bar, you know, looking at that bit of the wall, yeah, yeah. looking at the makiwara. There was a pen to hand, and, you know. <laughs> and she had this thing, this phrase in her head going yeah. around. She's like, can I write on the wall? And I was like, yeah, sure. Why not? Yeah. And that was how it started. It was, you know. There, so she signed, I think she wrote, make pain your friend. Ah. So Love, yeah. Sam. Yeah. Next to the Makiwara. Okay. And then so it just, just spreads from there. Right from there. Yeah. Boy, has it. Yeah. Good stuff. So the dojo bar has been open for eight years. Um, international hub. I, I don't know if, I'm sure back in England you have a place that, that is similar to what we have in America. And we actually have one up here next to the Camp Foster Marine Corps Base, the American Legion. Yeah. The American Legion is a place if you're new in town and uh, you need to find a, a plumber, or you need to find a, a tax account, you need right. to find anybody doing it, you go to the American Legion. Okay. I was right. always told that right. when you move into a new town. Yeah. I think the Dojo Bar has now uh, taken that for the international crowd to There's no doubt about it. You can come well, in here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's, that's, that's still what the Dojo Bar is all about. I mean, over the past 10 years, the situation here has improved dramatically. I mean, uh, as you know, uh, we now have a fantastic, uh, very visible, very easy to find karate training center, the Karate Kai Kan, which has a team there dedicated to doing essentially the same thing, helping people get connected with Okinawan karate, training here, publicizing events, etc., etc., organizing um, various things. So that's a huge step forward. Um, and you know, just the general profile of karate and karate activity in Okinawa over the past 10 years has, has really been improved. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, and I think the dojo bar has contributed to that. I think it um, is too, and, um, But now it's much easier, yeah. much easier to get connected, to get here, to go and train. Um, you don't have to wait for uh, necessarily an invitation, although it's still a nice idea to get one if yeah. you can. Yeah. Um, but many people just come here, maybe they don't even know so much about Okinawa Karate, but they arrive and now uh, Karate is being talked about as an important part of Okinawa culture. And so uh, 
you know, they, they get a chance to try. Yeah. Um, and that's not to mention, obviously, the people that come overseas specifically to come here and do what can I correct it. Now, they have uh, much better resources to hand as well. Yeah. Um, you know, there are still uh, some challenges, um, but um, it's it's you know, way, way better than yep. it was. Absolutely, it's getting better all the time. There's um, the Dojo Board, the, the Karate Kaikan, the Okinawa Karate uh, Information Center, I think it is, OKIC, that, that okay, holds uh, yep. enormous resource at the Kaikan. Um, but it would be crazy not to focus on your dojo. Yeah, sure. Um, my, my dojo opened just over a year ago. And, uh, uh, and yeah, I, I think things have been going pretty well. Do you know off the top of your head how many different senseis have conducted seminars in your dojo in the last year? Uh, it's uh, more than 10. More than Let's 10. Put it that way. And over uh, how many different styles or, or views would you say? Uh, we've had uh, various teachers of, let's say, Shonryu Karate, yep. uh, people from a sh uh, including people from the Shotokan background, um, uh, people from a very traditional, let's say, pre Shonryu, more like uh, Shurite or yeah. Swede um, background, very, very old style. Uh, shooting martial arts, uh, Motoguryu, so Motoguryundi, uh, uh, various forms of Kobudo, um, Ishinryu, mm -hmm. um, Praying Mantis Kung Fu a number of times, um, uh, Judo, uh, Aikido is a regular class that we have, not just a seminar as well. Um, I'm sure I'm missing out somebody that I shouldn't have shouldn't have forgotten. But uh, uh, what what haven't we had? We probably haven't had Uichiru yet, but I hope that one day we will. Yeah. Uh, Gojiru, Gojiru, not quite yet. Either. Okay. Yeah. So I've trained the Gojiru people in your dojo oh, from other we've from had other seminars. We've or... we've had people from many many different styles yeah. come and train together. And that's not to mention, th those are sort of organized seminars. We've had a, a large number of just training opportunities where people have come together and trained. So that has happened a lot. So you run a normal class, a weekly class, or daily class? We have classes know? every day. And your primary style now is, uh, not yet, primary style, Matsubashi Ryu. Matsubashi Ryu is what I've been studying for about 10 years now. 10 years in Okinawa. Um, yeah, because we kind of we've been bouncing around here a little bit, but getting to your point of uh, or your history, I mean, of coming uh, back here to Okinawa when you started looking for different dojos, you were Wado Ryu. Yeah. Didn't find it here. No, there's no Wado Ryu. But you began to search. Yeah, um, I so my uh, my wife's family um, took me among two or three dojos, people that they just knew socially. Um, so I uh, actually went along to uh, Mie, the Miyahira Dojo, uh, Miyahira Katsuya Sensei, while he was still alive. I got to meet him and train with him. So another branch of Shohan Yu Karate. Uh, he, was, he was a lovely gentleman. Um, um, and then also was in, introduced to Arakaki Toshimitsu Sensei, who was a direct student of Nagamini Shoshin, who founded Matsumashi Ryu. And I really um, enjoyed training with Arakaki Sensei. Um, and um, decided I wanted to continue training with him. Um, and so, yeah, I actually joined this dojo the year before we moved here permanently, because we'd already kind of decided that was what we were going to do. Yeah, um, so yeah, it's, and then I've trained with him as consistently as I can since then. Okay, so you've been living here for 10 years. Yeah. Um, a little over 11 years that you've been, or a little over 10 years you've been a member of that, yeah. that dojo. So your primary style that you teach over there on a daily basis is much best review. Yeah. And uh, Becca also, yes. um, Becca Tedder, uh, teaches uh, over there uh, primarily the, the children's class. That's right. Uh, and how many days a week is the children's class held? Uh, we have four classes a week Mon uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Do you have age? Uh, do you separate by age or do you have age requirements? Uh, we're starting to as the numbers get a bit bigger. Uh, in the first year, we sort of had everybody together. We had about 10 to 12 kids in the class. Uh, the dojo is not um, 
huge. I mean, it's fairly large by our canal standards, yeah. but you know, uh, it's, it's not not very big. So, um, but now we're starting to have a few more kids come along, and so yeah, we're kind of splitting out the young, younger kids from the older kids. Also, we were very uh, pleased to do our first uh, test for the kids at the end of last year. Um, so some of them now have um, advanced in their sort of the Q rankings. Yeah. So there's a natural kind of you know a bit of not separation yeah, but a, yeah. a graduation. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so our eldest is 15 and he's yeah. starting actually then to move into the adult classes. Yeah. And the youngest is four. Yeah. Uh, but the four-year-olds have really switched on. You know they they're really working hard yeah. too. The Becca, um, she's already told me that she won't come on the podcast. She won't allow me to interview. I think I'm going to change that. <laughs> Keep working. Rebecca is, uh, she, she's a sweetheart. Yeah. And I think, I don't know if this is what she had planned for her life, of being a teacher, being a sensei, but uh, I think this is really great for her. I think she's found yeah. a, I know, I agree. a wonderful place. I and I, you, you can see it, in the glow in her and those kids yeah. with what's going on there. So I'm really happy to see that as well. well Becca probably won't like me to kind of characterize her this way, but she was sort of one of the original karate nerds coming out, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, her, her sensei Steve from the UK, he runs the, what, what was at that time, the only Matsubashiru club in the UK. Um, and she'd been training with him, I think, for just one or two years, not very long. But then they all came over to Okinawa. And of course, you know, we're all part of the same style, same family, you know. And they're from the UK, so of course we got on really well. Um, and then she, after a little while, she came back to me and said that she wanted to come back and stay in Okinawa for a little while, which was a very courageous thing for her to do at that time. She was only in her early 20s and had never done anything like that before. So the fact that she reached out to me mm -hmm. and said, please help me to come back to Okinawa and stay and train for a while, of course, I was like, of course, yeah. yeah. Um, and, uh, and that was the beginning of her, her time here. Um, and since then, a number of other young people have essentially done the same thing. I, I help them on the practical side of things, you know, give them a place to stay and, and help them with training. Um, and it's great to see, and some stay for a while, and some, some just do, you know, three months or six months and go mm -hmm. home again. But I think they all, they all benefit from it. Yep. Uh, not just the karate training, but that, that experience of living in a, in a different culture. Yep. You know, it's... It's very demanding. It's very exhilarating yep. and exciting, yep. um, but it's it's also demanding, uh, particularly if they have no Japanese language skills, yeah. which is usually the case. Yeah. Then of course, you know, there's there's a, a number of very steep learning yeah. curves that they go through. Yeah. But they grow up a lot, and I had the same experience. I mentioned that you know when I was young, I went to live in Greece, and that was me. I was I was 18 years old. I went to a completely foreign country. Completely different language. I mean, it's as far away on the other side of Europe as you can get from the UK, yeah. and culturally, very, very different. Yeah. Um, and that, you know, I grew up grew up enormously through doing that, and that that is something that I think all young people I should do. They should do. Yeah, I did it when it was through the military. I came yeah. here when I was eighteen, but you know, you definitely had um, people guiding you and taking care of you. Yeah. But still. It, it was pretty gosh darn eye opening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But you, I think, you know, you only grow through challenge. That doesn't always have to be adversity. It can be that there's a number of fantastic things that you you could do, and you have to choose between mm -hmm. which ones you're going to mm -hmm. do, and really commit and work hard. Right. Sometimes though, it is adversity. Sometimes it's things which are really difficult. Yep. Um, but if you make it through that, um, you know, you come out stronger the other, the other end. Right. So. I think it's, it's karate training. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's martial arts training. You climb the mountain, yeah. and then you realize there's another big yeah. one behind it. Yeah, yeah, keep going. You slip, you go, yeah. <laughs> uh, isn't it tough? Yeah. So, the children's program you have going on, Monster Piastro yeah. Review Based, yeah. the uh, adult program that you, you teach, the Monster Piastro Review Based, are you still doing the Kumite Fridays? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So, every Friday, 8 p.m., we have our Kumite class. Um, mainly that uh, I hand that over to Tokuchi Mineo Sensei, who is a, a local teacher um, who has a lot of Kumite experience, has fought a lot of competitions just two or three weeks back, kind of came out of retirement and took part in another local full contact Kumite. So we're, we're talking full contact Kumite mm -hmm. with no mitts, gloves, nothing. Yeah. This is, this is it kind of, you know, now 
I suppose it's Kyokushin style yeah. to look at it. Yeah. Um, but it's closer to, let's say, the older style, or let's say, modern kind of point scoring yeah. karate. Yeah. So there's no perfect form of kumite. Uh, but I think, you know, there are you know, you need to use kumite to test yourself. Yeah. So we, um, the, the focus in the kumite is therefore on it being, uh, you know, a good rounded mix of attack and defense. Um, and, uh, and I enjoy it. Um, sometimes I teach the kumite class as well. Um, but there's sort of a, it's very interesting that Tsukuchi Sensei comes from another branch of the sort of Shore and family. But the principles for kumite, I think, are very much the same across not just Shoran karate, but also mm -hmm. many styles of Okinawa karate mm -hmm. too. So um, and once you start to to realize that, then you know it's almost just how you apply them. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. um, so is the Friday night kumite class open to only adults? Um, it, it, well, the youngest we've had in there is, is sort of 15 years old. Uh, no, actually, no, we had one family, one, uh, sorry father and son come and do it, and I think the son was maybe younger than that, maybe 13 or 14. Okay. Um, it's not sort of uh, just for long bashing each other. Yeah. Right? Um, so it was fairly technical. So I think it rather depends on, on the, the ability. Sure. Yeah. You can have a younger person who can, who can kind of stay upright and look yeah. after themselves, yeah. then that's okay. Yeah. 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 But we have all kinds of different people come and take part different styles and backgrounds. Okay. Um, it's physically quite demanding. Yeah. There is contact. Yeah. Sometimes a lot of contact. But it's always done in a in a in a um let's say a caring manner. Controlled <laughs> right. controlled caring. We're we're trying we're trying not to damage people, yeah. but it will hurt. Information exchange. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. With a lot of sweat. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh a lot of sweat. Yeah. Like in the summer months. Yeah. We're going outside and literally ringing the entire gear yeah. out on the street. That's yeah. just ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. Okinawa in the summer. I mean, if you're coming, if you've never been here and you plan on coming in the summer, you should start hydrating probably in February or March. <laughs> <laughs> and don't stop. And by yeah. hydrating, I do mean water, not beer. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, that's for after. Yeah. So, I want to jump into the future, if you don't mind. Yeah. We've covered a bit of your background. I know we went over it quickly. Yeah. The dojo bar. One of the reasons we're sitting in the dojo bar right now and not actually in your dojo is you also have yoga going on uh, we do from indeed. time to time. Yeah. Um, so it's it's a it's a wonderful occasion. I encourage everyone to check it out. Um, and the reason I did want to ask about the different senseis and mm -hmm. training and styles is I want people to understand, too, that it is an international and it is a multi-style, multi-view, multi-faceted uh, program or dojo, if you will. It's almost like you never know who's going to be there, who's, who's visiting the island, and all of a sudden a seminar pops up. So for the people that are not here, you know, that's a little bit difficult. For the people that are here, pay attention to the Facebook pages because all of a sudden a, do a seminar pops up that you weren't prepared for and you need to get in there. So the dojo. I suppose inevitably kind of reflect, reflects my <laughs> my personality, <laughs> the way I approach things, which is I like to plan. Yeah. Yeah. I, I you know I plan things, but if somebody if an opportunity comes up, I'm like just grab it. Yep. Yeah. Don't worry about you know you know just just do it. Uh, if somebody turns up and there's an opportunity to train and learn something, grab it and do it. Right? Yes, and also for the different uh, karate cow that come here to visit. Sensei, etc. Please, please get in touch with James, and maybe you'd like to teach a seminar at his dojo. Absolutely. And maybe I would like to join it. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. No. I mean, look, um, one of the reasons that I was really keen to establish the dojo was to take advantage of that. In that, these days, there is on Okinawa. There are uh, there's a Okinawa's kind of like got this this sort of uh, huddle of, of fantastic teachers, right? Mm -hmm. Okinawan teachers and some other teachers that have decided to make their home in Okinawa. Um, so in terms of sort of teachers per square mile, there's real density, right? Yeah, yeah that's yeah, quite yeah. special. Yeah. yeah. But you know, there's fantastic teachers all over the place. I mean, yep. you know, they're, they're, and, and uh, it kind of it, it still always seemed to me a great shame that when overseas teachers would come to Okinawa. And obviously, they would come normally to principally be students and to learn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also, you know, 
let's take advantage of, uh, of their knowledge yeah. and, um, you know, and their, um, their ability as yeah. well. So that's, that's what the dojo is about. It's a venue yeah. to do that. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm always extremely grateful if someone would like that, it, uh, you know, gives a little bit of their time in Okinawa to teach. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm very happy to, to, to host that. Very happy with that. So, you're going to be hosting something else coming up at the end of this calendar year. Yes. Um, so, so this is a, an international seminar. Event. Um, it's going to run over the best part of two weeks. It's a 12, 13 day program um, where um, you get to study for three days with each of three teachers. So, Three days of intensive study um, from morning through to night, um, and then social time as well. Mm -hmm. So the reason that we're that I wanted to put together a, a seminar in this way is that there are a lot of seminars that are held in Okinawa, and they all have benefit. Mm -hmm. um, but what I often heard in the feedback from both the participants and the teachers, the Okinawan teachers, was that there just wasn't enough, enough time. Mm -hmm. You know an hour, two hours, three hours, a half day um, with with a teacher it was only enough just to see the basics, mm -hmm. just to get a flavor of things. And often there wasn't enough time to sit down and talk about mm -hmm. it and, and get them to explain it as well, sometimes in a more relaxed way. Mm -hmm. um, and I know, and you know from living here and, and having the time to do that, that there's enormous benefit in having more time to train, but also having the time to talk to the teacher yeah. and understand their view on things and get them to explain things or their, understand their, their history, their, yeah. their, their, their experience. So the idea is that, um, flash, the, flash the image, so the idea is that over 12 days um, you'll meet uh, three different teachers, go and train at their dojos, go and train in their, uh, in their locale. So that also means that you'll go and visit different areas. Of the so one of the other things that I hear a lot is that people come principally to stay in Naha, uh -huh. although some go to Wakinawa City, spend all their time in Naha, maybe get one day to go and do something, see yeah. the island, yeah. and then they're gone again. Yeah, yeah. And of course, that's okay because they came to Wakinawa for training. Yep. Right? But it also, in a way, it's kind of a shame because there's some beautiful areas yeah. around Wakinawa. And yeah. if you know where to go, it can add a whole new dimension. Yep. So, uh, with this seminar, I want to escort people, take them, guide them um, to visit dojos and train with teachers around the island. And along the way then there's also the opportunity to enjoy those areas, to go and do some, some uh, you know, adventurous so activities, sightseeing, climb a mountain, see a waterfall. But yeah. the focus is going to be on, on these, these three day programs of intensive study. Um, and um, typically, you know, get up in the morning, do that first night training with the teacher, have breakfast together, go back to the dojo, train in the morning, rest in the afternoon, which is the open hour way, yeah, yeah. recharge a bit, come yeah. back into the dojo for the evening session, where you might end up training with their local students too. Yeah. Um, so that's the idea. So tell me, tell us the name, the name that you've uh, chosen. It's on. It's yeah. Um, this. So there's this, uh, Yuimaru Hakken is, is the name that I've chosen. Um, Yuimaru is a, is a Okinawan phrase, uh, which literally means the good circle of the people. Uh, so it talks about this idea that people are connected. Yeah. Um, the connectedness uh, between people in Okinawa, but it also extends to everybody as well. Yeah. And it goes hand in hand with this concept of uh, the Okinawan says this phrase, the Chadabachode, yes. which is like when we meet, we are found. Yes. Yeah. So the idea that all humans are connected and we should, we should act like a family. Unless that person convinces us otherwise. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we should we should extend that kind of hospitality and family to yeah. family feeling to everybody. So that's the idea. You and I are all connected, and we just need to, to, to discover. Mm -hmm. And hakken means discovery in Japanese. So the idea is that we're discovering the connectedness uh, between your martial arts, uh, between the knowledge in Okinawa, and between the people in Okinawa. Yeah. Uh, and you get the time to do that. Uh, so once again, twelve day, and they can stay longer if they so desire. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. But a twelve day seminar, three senseis. Yeah. And you get uh, 
three days of training with that yeah, morning to individual night. sensei. Yeah. Um, and you, the point you had made earlier on, and I'm glad you said that because as I was driving down here today, I was thinking questions I wanted to ask you, and something popped into my head was I, I was wondering if the senseis gave feedback about not having enough time with the students. You mentioned it already, and uh, I think that's very important because that sensei also needs to read those students. Absolutely. Let's not kid ourselves, they can typically read you rather quickly, especially <laughs> the ones that have seen a lot of the international students, right? Yeah. But it's going to allow them to open up so much more. Exactly. And on day two and on day three, yeah. then only if they had you for two hours. Yeah. Because after the international tournament that we, that Okinawa hosted, hey folks, uh, we had a little bit of a technical difficulty there. I lost about the last 10 minutes of the interview. So we left off, uh, the, I don't know what happened, the camera shut off. Something. I'm glad I checked it before I left. But we we left off where James was showing us the second poster there, describing Yu Maru, and we were talking about the fact that it's beneficial for the senseis also. Yeah. Yeah. To have three hours. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, three days. Um, yeah. Worth of sessions with the students. Yeah. I, I think you know the the one of the important points that you know, I I wanted to make was that um, this is a new seminar format um, and. I believe that uh, it's important to invest the time in really learning, you know, more than just the sort of the, the very basics, the introductory uh, level of, of uh, the martial art, but also to, to, to take time to talk to the instructor, mm -hmm. to get to know them both in the dojo and outside too. So um, uh, I'll be acting as interpreter, um, also some of uh, my uh, dojo staff will be along to help out as well. So the idea is that we, we build in plenty of time for both the participants and the instructors to get to know each other, mm -hmm. uh, to talk about their views on martial arts, talk about their experience, their history. Um, because you know, I think the way that we are gonna, gonna build Okinawa martial arts practice stronger into the future is to give people an opportunity to establish a connection with it. Yeah. And feel like it's something that they want to continue with, and you and you do that based on on uh, you know, personal connections, on human relationships. You know, it's uh, beneficial as well to understand and to see that sensei's personality mm. inside and outside the dojo, and for them to be able to see yours, because a lot of times that'll translate in their content, it'll translate okay. in their teaching, it'll translate if they if they do go into teaching bunkai or applications to it. Yeah, you'll start to see that come out many times. Absolutely. In their in their personality, uh, when you're sitting around having dinner and talking, and, yeah, and, and that goes for the students as well as the senseis. I think it's, it's very beneficial. Yeah, I've, I've heard that um, from from many different teachers here. Is that um, if they've got, let's say, the good stuff, you know, uh, the things, you know, the, the the technique which they regard as being the sort of thing that they would teach as being the most effective part of what they do, and therefore maybe the most dangerous part of what they do. They're not just going to give it away to anybody, yeah. and they're not going to show you it the first time that they meet you there, because there's a sense of responsibility. Yes. Right. Yep. Yep. You may take that away yep. and then do something with it which they feel they bear responsibility for. You may misrepresent it. You may misuse it. Right? Um, but also, there's this, you know, they there's a sense that they they, they want to know that that. Uh, you are the sort of person that they want to be associated with, mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. um, that, they, that they, they want associated with their name. Mm -hmm. Reputation is important, you know, not, not just from an egotistical perspective, but it's, it's sort of an assurance of, of quality, an yeah. assurance of, of high standards. Yeah. 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 Um, and uh, therefore, uh, I think it's really important that uh, both participants, students, and teachers have that time to get to know each other. Yeah. Uh, and feel like they want to be the most representatives yes. yeah. of a particular style or a particular teacher. Yeah. And if that's not the case, that's fine. It's still a great opportunity to learn more in depth about that particular style. Yeah. Um, we were talking about also, um, obviously, all these teachers are at Okinawa. Yeah. Uh, and uh, when they can, I think they'll, they'll teach in English, or they may teach in Japanese, or they may teach in Okinawan language, which language. Um, and uh, as I said, I'll, I'll be there to uh, interpret uh, along with other people too. 
uh, getting an understand, understanding of the concepts that are expressed best, let's say, in Okinawan mm -hmm. language, mm -hmm. uh, is also a very important aspect of, yeah. of the training as well. Yeah, so people that have never been here before, this might be your first time coming over to, to Japan at all, Okinawa at all, don't worry about the language. Uh, I think, you know, as well as the opportunities to train for international katakana to train, the language barrier is being eliminated more and more all the time as well. Yeah. And that's not only counting in the dojo. I mean, that's from the time you arrive at Naha Airport now, um, traveling around Naha and other places on the island, it's becoming easier and easier for those that speak English. Yeah. Um, it, but if not, uh, you have someone like James or the, the additional staff that will help out. It's, I would not worry about that at all. It's, it's, definitely, to my it's definitely getting better. Um, it's interesting though that there are some karate concepts that are kind of described by specific Okinawan words that even other Okinawan speakers who are non karataka don't understand. They wouldn't have heard of it. Yeah. You know, it's very specialized language. Yeah. Uh, getting into that, talking about that with your teacher, yeah. getting them to explain the nuances of that can be very bad. Yeah. Uh, and having someone that can translate that for you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Really important. Absolutely. Uh, but it's interesting because those kind of concepts, you know, they'll be described slightly differently by different teachers. Well, uh, yeah, and, and okay, so I just thought of something, um, and I'm not, this is not a knock on any of the translators at the other seminars, but sometimes you'll get someone that just translates yeah. the language, yeah. not the meaning. Yeah. We've seen that at the seminars after the World Tournament. Yeah. Um, they had translators there that had absolutely zero understanding of martial arts. Yeah. Other than, hey, I'm in Okinawa and this is where karate yeah. supposedly comes from, I don't know. Yeah. But I, I have a, a certain Aiken or yeah. Z-Tech or TOEFL yeah. level of a score and I can translate. Good luck. Uh, you're going to miss a lot, I think. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, they, they, they struggle because they don't have the background in the concepts, the karate concepts. Like anything, there's, there's a lot of specialized language. So, uh, yeah, it, it's often like in those kind of situations, I'm tempted to jump in and go, no, yeah. that, that's not what that means. That's not what that means. But, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, but yeah. Times that's happened and things have gone out on Facebook or books that yeah, have yeah, been yeah. published. And, yeah. and, and I've been guilty of it. Because <laughs> you, know, you understand uh, a particular word or, um, I th actually, I've had this conversation with you about kanji, you know, mm. different ways you read it. Yeah. And the meaning behind it. My wife tells me all the time when I'm trying to get her, hey, translate this. Somebody tell me, I don't know what that means. Yeah. What do you mean? You read it. I, I don't know how they meant it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But the benefit of coming over here uh, with someone that organizes the seminar, someone that has already trained many times with the sensei, yeah. knows them quite well, is you're going to get that, that level of translation and understanding that you might not normally get. Yeah. I mean, we'll, we will do our absolute best to. Uh, explain the concepts, to um, give the, the senseis plenty of time to explain them, um, and also for, for disciplines to ask questions, yes. to have a conversation as opposed to just sort of, you know, just listening and then yeah. that's it, thank you very much, see you later, right? We, want, we really want to have that interaction. I think, I hope the senseis appreciate it as much as I think they do with the, with the questions, especially if you have a small group of 10 to 18 people. Yeah, yeah. Um, and after you get you get to know that person over three sessions, and yeah. the, the students are asking the questions, I think the senseis are much more likely to give you an answer oh, of value absolutely. rather than um, just kind of the textbook that they have to give when there's a, a room full of 100 people and they you all know, NHK cameras are rolling or something like that. You're, yeah, yeah. you're going to get a lot more in depth. Yeah, I think so. And the fact that you get to see sensei one, two, three days in a row, there's plenty of time for you to kind of think about. You know, regurgitate what you've learned yeah. the next day, ask your questions, flesh it out. Um, so uh, that's, again, why I think this format hopefully will be much more beneficial to, to people. So, once again, folks, you, Yuimaru Haken, go to uh, what, challengeokinawa.com? Challengeokinawa.com. There on the, the home page, you'll see the banner. Just click on that and go through to the detailed information about the event. Also, you can book there um, from, that page, from that page too. As I destroy this poster.
If you have any questions, contact James, contact me. For those that do come over here and take place in the seminar, I'd like to sit down and take an interview. Um, get in touch with me, Josh, at Okinawa Karate Podcast. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, we'll be out there. Um, as always, I really appreciate those. Viewers, I appreciate the thumbs up, the comments. If you have questions, send them to me. Comments, send them to me. Um, get in touch with James if you have anything Same. going on. Yeah. Um, but as always, thank you, my friend. Thank really, you. Really, really appreciate thank it. Thank you so much. Once again, Josh Summers, the Okinawa Karate, pa Okinawa Karate Podcast, coming to you from the birthplace of karate, Okinawa, Japan. Sayonara.